we are going to look at just the very, very basics of slope and how to find it. Now, when you hear the word slope, one thing that might come to mind is rise over run. That's a lot of times what people start with when they are talking about slope. You might also think about delta y over delta x. Now this delta is a Greek letter and it usually represents change in, so it would be change in y over change in x. Or maybe the slope formula pops to mind, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Notice that all three of these things are ratios. It's the ratio of rise to the run. It's the ratio of the change in y to the change in x, which is the same thing this says. They're all ratios. Um, one way that you can think about slope is you can think about it as the steepness of a line. So if you were driving a car up a hill compared to maybe this hill, well, my top one here is steeper it has a greater slope. This bottom one's not as steep, it has a smaller slope. So slope can deal with steepness. Um, another thing that we will eventually get to later is that slope is also a rate of change. And we will do that when we start looking at graphs and labels and how this ratio of rise over run gives us this rate of change. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna find the slope of a line between these two points. I'm going to do that by using the slope formula. And in order to do that, I need to first assign my ordered pairs to be either x sub 1, y sub 1, or x sub 2, y sub 2. I'm just going to call my first ordered pair x1, y1, and my second one x2, y2. Now I can go ahead and plug them into my formula. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I've taken all my values and I've plugged them into my formula. Now when I do the top, this minus a negative 8 turns into plus a positive. So I end up getting 3 over 2. So the slope of the line that would pass through these two points would be 3 over 2. Now you might be wondering what happens if instead of calling this first ordered pair x1, y1, I call them x2, y2 and I call these other ones x1, y1. Well, we'll calculate the slope that way also. So now if I use my slope formula, I have to take y2, which is negative 8, minus my y1, which is negative 5, over my x2, which is 7, minus my x1, which is 9. On the top, I get plus a positive again, so I get negative 3 over negative 2. And when you divide two negatives, it turns into a positive. So notice that we get the same answer. The important things are the y's have to go on the top. That's a common error for people to put x on top. It's the y's that go on top. It's rise over run, rise being up. And then another mistake that people make is they don't pair them up right. Notice that the negative 8, 7 right here, they're right on top of each other. They are partners in our ordered pairs the negative 5, 9 here, they are partners in our ordered pairs. Negative 5, 9 here, partners in our ordered pairs. Negative 8, 7, partners in the ordered pairs. So they have got to be lined up that way. If you mix match, so let's say we had the 9 first here and the 7 back here, but we left the top, you aren't going to come up with the right slope because they have to be paired that way. So you'll want to identify which ones are x1, y1, and x2, y2, and then plug them into your formula. Okay, here's another one. Find the slope of the vertical line that grows, goes through the point 5, 3. Well, in order to use our formula, we have to have two ordered pairs. So we have a couple options here. I could sketch myself a little picture, graph the point 5, 3, and now I have a vertical line. Well, vertical lines go straight up and down. So if this right here is the point 5, 3, I can find another point on this line. I'm going to go with that one. That would be at 5, 0, because that's what vertical means. It has to be right directly above it. So I still have to go over 5, but I'm not going to go up anywhere. From here, I could go ahead and use my slope formula. I could use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I'm going to get 3 over 0. Now right now you should have some, some math radar going off that something's not right about this. And the problem is we're not allowed to divide by zero. 
So what happens anytime we have a vertical line, we are going to have an undefined slope. And the reason that's going to happen is because no matter where I go, let's call this x, if I go up here to um, x comma 5 and down here to x comma negative 2, when I do that subtraction on that vertical line on the bottom, I'm going to have x minus x. So it might be 10 minus 10 or 3 minus 3 or 8 minus 8. I am always going to get a 0 in the denominator anytime I have a vertical line. So any vertical line has an undefined slope. Now another way I could have thought about this is okay using my picture so I didn't want to put points on there I just want to use my picture well slope is rise over run so I can rise a whole bunch maybe I rise seven but my run I don't go over to the right or to the left so my run would be zero so I would still end up with an undefined slope divide by zero so there's multiple ways that you can think about these okay here's what I want you to try so pause the video and see if you can find the slope of the horizontal line that goes through 3, 6. Hopefully it came up with a 0. Now on this one, if you did it using two points, I sketched a little graph, I put 3, 6 on here, and then to get a horizontal line I went over 5 and up 6. Well when I did that subtraction I got 0 over 2, which turns out to be a 0. It's okay to have a 0 in the numerator. Or you could have thought about it as rise over run. To get from this point to that point, I don't go up or down any, so my rise would be zero, and my run is however far over I went, so maybe I went clear up here to 10. Well, that's still going to turn out to be zero. Okay, so we've got these two different things going on. Vertical lines are always undefined. Horizontal lines are always a zero slope. Big difference between the two. One way that you can think about it is a car. Can I drive a car on a horizontal line here? Could I drive that car there? You bet. Could I drive a car on a vertical? And the answer to that one would be no, because you would fall off. The car would completely fall off. So you can't drive on a vertical line, which means you can't have a slope, which means it's undefined. A horizontal line has a zero slope. There is no incline. It's just a nice flat road. No steepness to it. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to look at these graphs and I want you to find the slopes of the parallel lines shown. Now one way that you can do this, the easiest way to do this, is to pick two points that are perfectly on the corners. So I'm going to pick those two points for my first line and on my second line I'm going to pick those two points. And what I want you to do is I want you to either use the slope formula, I either want you to use rise over run, change in y over change in x and I want you to find the slope we'll call this one line 1 and then find the slope of line 2 so pause the video and go ahead and find those slopes hopefully you found the slope of line 1 to be 3 over 2 now if you did this using rise over run you could count how far up did I go I went 1 2 3 and what was the run 1 2 so I had my rise over my run or you could have used the slope formula. Same thing happens here. I go down 3 and left 2. Well, down 3 and left are both negatives, so that would still give me a 3 over 2. Notice the slopes of both of those lines compared to each other. They are identical. So one thing that you need to know is that parallel lines have identical slopes which if you think about it as the steepness of a hill if you have two hills that are the exact are parallel to each other they have to be the exact same steepness otherwise they would run into each other and if they're the same steepness they have to have the same slope okay this one Let's do a similar type of thing I want you to find the slopes of the two lines shown we'll call that one line one this one line two and we need to find some points on the corners let's see right here's one and right there's one so again find the slopes of line one and line two and notice these are perpendicular lines alright with these they aren't the same like parallel was but they do have some relationships to each other line one was three over two 
line 2 was negative 2 over 3. If you were to describe somebody to somebody how these numbers were, you would probably indicate that they're reciprocals of each other, because 3 over 2 and 2 over 3, but then we also have to take this negative into account. So with perpendicular lines, their slopes, we call them opposite, because we need the positive and negative part, reciprocals of each other. So anytime we have perpendicular lines, their slopes are always going to turn out to be opposite reciprocals. Now another thing that I want to look at on this particular one is so far we've had um, lines that are going up and to the right. And notice that its slope was positive 3 over 2. Think about it as going up a hill. Well, on this line 2, we ended up with a negative slope. And if you think about it as a hill, you are going down the hill. We always start on the left-hand side of our paper. So from the left going down the hill, that gave us a negative slope. When we started on the left here, with our positive slope, we were going up. What we can kind of generalize is that anytime we have a negative slope, we call those decreasing. Our line is decreasing. Whenever we have a positive slope, our line is increasing. So those are also a couple different things to keep in mind. Okay, here's our practice ones. I give you three different lines here. What I want you to do is find the slope of each line. So find the slopes individually. And then down here, once you find the slopes, I want you to compare line one to line two. And I want you to tell me, are they parallel? Are they perpendicular or are they neither? So you're going to look at the slopes and you're going to decide for each of these pairs. So go ahead and pause the video, find the slopes, and then decide what you think the relationship is between each one of these different pairs down here. Okay, line one, I had a slope of 1 over 3. Line two, I had negative 3 over 1. Line three, I had 12 over negative 7. Well, when I came down here and I had to compare line 1 to line 2, so I'm looking at 1 third compared to negative 3. Now, it might not be obvious right away that these are actually opposite reciprocals, but negative 3 is also um, negative 3 over 1, and these two are reciprocals of each other, and they are also opposites. One is positive, so one's going up, and one is negative, so one's going down. So they are perpendicular because they're opposite reciprocals. Then I had to compare line 1 and line 3. So this time I was looking at the 1 third compared to the negative 12 sevenths. Those are neither. They're not identical, which would make them parallel, and they're not opposite reciprocals. Now they are opposites. One is positive and one's negative, but they aren't reciprocals. And to be perpendicular, you have to be both opposite and a reciprocal. So lines 1 and 3, they are not neither. They're not parallel, they're not perpendicular. Lines 2 and 3, same type of thing going on. I have negative 3 over 1 compared to negative 12 sevenths. They're not identical, so they're not parallel, and they're not opposite reciprocals. They're not opposites or reciprocals. So they would also be neither when you compare them to each other.